quick revision video on the reactions of alkenes. So some essentials. Alkenes are more reactive than alkanes due to the presence of the pi bond. Since the pi electrons are on the outside of the double bond, this makes it easier to break. And that's because they are more exposed. Because the double bond breaks, it, it's possible to add atoms or groups to the alkene. And therefore, alkenes undergo addition reactions. And the ones we need to know about are with hydrogen, halogens, so for example, chlorine, bromine, hydrogen halides, so in other words, HCl, HBr, and steam, so in other words, gaseous H2O. And a top tip, think of the reactants as AB, and that's especially helpful when it comes to something like water, H2O, think of that as HOH. So what I'm saying there is hydrogen, think of it as HH, halogens, CLCL or BRBR, hydrogen halides, fairly obvious, HCL, HBR, and again, steam as HOH. So the rest of the video, we're just going to go through each of those reactions. I've got a couple of examples that you could try and then you can play on for the answers. So the first one, the reaction with hydrogen, known as hydrogenation. So alkenes react with hydrogen in the presence of a nickel catalyst and at a temperature of 150 degrees C. So it's really important that you know those conditions. In the reaction, the pi bond breaks, the two hydrogen atoms add across the CC double bond and the product is an alkane. So a couple of examples if you wanted to try those now and then play on for the answers. So octane or octuanine will give that reaction there. So obviously we'll produce an octane. Penta 1,4 diene, notice I've said with an excess of hydrogen. So both of the double bonds will break and the two moles of hydrogen will react and you're gonna make pentane. Next one is the reaction with halogens. This is known as halogenation. So alkenes react with halogens at room temperature. There's no catalyst or special temperature requirement for this one. And again, the pi bond uh, breaks and the two halogen atoms add across the CC double bond. And the product now is a dihaloalkane. So there's your two examples to try. So in the first one, we're going to get 1,2-dibromobutane. And there's an important thing to know about this reaction. The bromine would be decolorized. So whenever there's a carbon-carbon double bond reacting with bromine, the bromine is decolorized. It goes from sort of an orangey-yellow color to colorless. And that reaction is used as the test for a carbon-carbon double bond or the test for unsaturation. So the next reaction looks like that. So again, we've got two double bonds now to react. So we're going to react it with two moles of chlorine and we get that cyclic halogenoalkane, which is called 1, 2, 3, 4, tetrachlorocyclohexane. Next reaction is the reaction with hydrogen halides. This reaction doesn't really have a special name. So they react at room temperature again, so no temperature requirement, no catalyst. And yet again, the pi bond breaks and the hydrogen and halogen atoms add across the carbon-carbon double bond and we're going to make a haloalkane. So there's your two examples. So the first one would make bromoethane and for the second reaction, there are two possible products. So we can get 2-chloropropane or chloropropane or 1-chloropropane, you could call it. Now, one of those products would be formed in preference to the other one. The major minor products are explained by Markovnikov's rule. And I've got a separate video on that. And the final reaction, the reaction with steam known as hydration. So alkenes react with steam in the presence of a strong acid catalyst. So there's a couple of examples you could use. Phosphoric acid, H3PO4, or concentrated sulfuric acid. And there needs to be a temperature of greater than 100 degrees C, because obviously you've got to turn that water into steam. And just as before, the pi bond breaks, and the hydrogen atom and the OH group from the steam add across the CC double bond. That's where that AB trick comes in handy. 
and the product this time is an alcohol. So there's your two examples. So in the first reaction, there are two possible products. So we could either get pentan-2-ol or pentan-3-ol. And again, Marconikov's rule would help us explain which is the major product and which is the minor product. Remember, there's another video for that. The final reaction, you would make cyclobutanol.